Alex, what is the most life experienced individual uh, you've worked with one on one? And that's my kosher way of saying age there. Um, and what considerations are you what considerations are you making to their programming, if if so? The oldest individual that I have worked with or the most life experienced individual that I've worked with was mid sixties. And so some of the considerations that I have uh that I would utilize in the program design for that individual is watching them through their movement, um, speaking to their ailments and those different factors. So a lot of video um, is is utilized in this scenario and seeing how they move through uh, just simply hip hinging, going into a squat. What's the mobility that they have there? What are some things that we're trying to work through? Or, or is there anything like arthritis or anything of that nature presented? And then navigating towards that because right now or in that time frame, really what I'm trying to accomplish, at least when I'm thinking back to the, the referenced uh, client that we're speaking to, it was a lot about coordination and ensuring that we are doing the best from a bone density standpoint, making sure that utilizing the training is not necessarily to add muscle density or, or to create a hypertrophy benefit. The, this individual that I'm speaking to is not going to be adding this massive bolus of, of muscle tissue, but more so focusing on the coordination, the um the neurological benefit of of the movement patterns and those different aspects. So it's going to be considerably less volume and and working through um, and, and working to strengthen some of these smaller details, the the uh, tendons and ligaments, and and being able to work through the best range of motion that they could possibly do. Um, so that would be the initial thoughts. Yeah, and I think an important thing here is not just looking at like what age someone is, but just how able they are. Because I know Alex had a client that was around 55 who's extremely in great shape, mm -hmm. um, Maria. And she just, yeah. she reached the best shape that she ever has at 50. And she is in the gym like an animal. So yeah. it does depend not just on a blanket of, okay, when someone's 50 and older, this is how you have to treat them. It does depend on where they're coming to you from. Like Alex said, what those ailments are, what their mobility ability is. So that's all really going to matter because for that other client, you didn't have to scale back volume. She was all for it. Yeah. I've got a couple of clients who are in their mid to late fifties right now. And if I was to tell any of them that we were not going to like uh, squat or do any of the movements that they love uh, because of their age, they would <laughs> They would probably drive to my home and <laughs> not be very nice. They'd yeah. be very upset. And I mean, Shannon Sharp is out here after That's a hip true. replacement bention, like it's nobody's business. So he's I, made from a different cloth. Yeah, he's, he, he's, he's he is, breed. I will say, his genetics are very good. Oh, dear. But he, <laughs> he is of an older age and still just getting after it. So I know for myself, I have definitely had a lot of clients, um, not saying 30 is old, but just saying as far as age range, from 30 to mid 50s and it does depend on their mobility more than anything and how able they are because I have some that are achy breaky and some that are good to go and they could be at the high end or the low end of that range so it's really looking at the individual and being able to see what do they need from this program right now and some of it is just I need to be able to go and play with my grandchildren and some of it's I want to be as strong as shit and pick up some heavy weight and so it's really tailoring it towards what that person really needs um, because I know that um, getting into like my parents when I first started personal training I was training them in person and my dad was a d1 swimmer he was an athlete his whole life but with that he did a lot of upper body training and didn't do a ton of lower body training and when he wanted to get in and to lift I was like we're really focusing on some lower body stuff and we were doing hip thrusts and he was like why are we doing hip thrusts like I'm not trying to grow my glutes and I was like it's not necessarily to just grow your glutes or to get you a big old booty it's it's because we need to look at how able you are as you age. My dad's an extremely active, per my parents are extremely active people as far as like they're running around all of the time. My dad loves to swim still to this day. They go on bike rides, they go on walks, they're all over the place. And um, it's he, if he was to, as you mentioned earlier, not be able to take care of himself, 
that would be the hugest detriment to him. And so I talked about like the reason we're focusing on your glutes is for your pelvic stability as you age. It's also to help your lower back and your knees as you age. And we need certain muscles in place to be able to move. And so as you age, it does get to a place where you can lose muscle mass and bone density. And if you aren't proactive or you aren't working on certain things, then that could really inhibit your ability to walk, to play, to stand, to do a lot of these activities that you want to do. And so being able to look at, okay, I know my dad through and through. I know what he wants to do. He wants to be able to run around like he's in high school doing a million different things. He tried to lift like a 10-ton fridge for my sister the other day. He wants to be able to do these things. And that starts with making sure his body can handle that and be in a spot that he is able to do that. So he's not trying to look like a bodybuilder or anything. He's trying to look comfortable or feel comfortable in his clothes, like the number that he looks down at and be active. And so taking all of that into consideration and building out what's going to allow him to do that. Is he going to spend an hour and a half in the gym lifting? Probably not. Will he spend 30, 45 minutes getting in there and doing other activity? Yes. So how can we make a program that is going to be best suited for him to live the life that he wants to? Because that at the end is really how I look at health is I want to be able to live the life that I want to and my health not hold me back. And so when I see that in other individuals, I am combing through the plan with a fine tooth comb to think, all right, what needs to be in place so this person can really feel their best and continue to do what they want to do with their life and not be held back by an age or just a health issue?